probably the main verse for me was Deuteronomy chapter six that says, you shall teach your children diligently yep. when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you rise up and when you lie down. In other words, 24 seven. And I, I looked at that and I thought there's two things there. I need to teach my kids the word of God, which leads into our podcast today. And the second mm-hmm. thing I need to do is I need to be with them. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. Oh boy, I am so glad that you are with me today because I have one of my favorite guests on, Steve Demi. And I know some of you probably are like, Steve Demi, he's on the podcast and you guys are gonna talk about math. No, 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 because Steve Demi, he is the creator of Math UC. So many of you maybe recognize his face or you certainly recognize his name. But we are not going to talk at all this week about math. Do you know why we're not going to talk about math? Because close your ears, Steve. Don't listen to this. I hate math, you guys. You know that I hate math, which is why, which is why our kids use CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great math program, go to ctcmath.com and try them out for free. Um, And we are thankful for them sponsoring this podcast. Um, But Steve is here to talk about families. And we are so grateful for him. He has been on the podcast before and such a blessing to us. And so... We are here to uh, just glean wisdom from this just man of God. Truly, truly, God has done amazing things in and through this man. And so I'm so thankful that you guys are here to share in this blessing. Um, Steve, welcome back to the Schoolhouse Talk podcast. I'm so glad to have you back with me. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, many months ago, um, as we plan for the podcast and we we start planning who we're going to have come on as guests. And sometimes we do different series on the podcast. And, and it had really been on my heart to do a family series because, of course, homeschooling is all about family, right? It's about family discipleship. It's about parents taking control of the discipleship of their kids on a day-to-day basis throughout the whole day. It's about us as moms learning how to be the moms that God called us to be and dads learning how to be the dads that God's called them to be and created them to be, and then our kids growing up to be who God made them to be as well. And so as we were thinking about the family series and trying to line up, you know, okay, who are we going to have as part of this series? One of the most important things that the Lord really put on my heart was family worship and family discipleship. It's such an important part of our family that we do every day with our girls. And so we are going to talk about this. And so quite some time ago, Steve, sent me this book that he wrote. It's the Family Worship book, and it's Family Worship. Um, it's a small book. It's an easy read, but it is it is just packed full of wisdom and guidance for us as parents. And so we're using this series, uh, or this week, to kind of kick off the family series that we're going to start in January. And so we wanted to give you just a little bit of a taste of what we're going to be doing with this family series. And I just couldn't think of anyone better to kick it off than Steve. So Steve, introduce us to yourself and your family for those who don't know you and Building Faith Families, the ministry that you are currently so passionate about. Okay. So first, I'm going to just turn my screen a little bit so you can see an old picture of our family. You can see that, <laughs> I right? noticed that. And that's for those who are watching, because okay. not all are watching. But if you are watching it, you see that. That looks like it's straight from the 80s, right? <laughs> 70s, maybe? <laughs> no, 90s. No, really? <laughs> yes. That just makes me feel old. <laughs> okay, at least say early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, so... Um, God blessed us with four sons, Isaac, Ethan, Joseph, and John. And uh, our, our just a little uh, overview story is that I graduated from seminary and I met my wife when I was in New England and we got married and seminary graduation was on Saturday and we got married on Sunday in a different state in New England. And then Isaac joined our family nine months later. Anybody that knows me know that when I am moving, I'm moving. Okay. So, <laughs> and then Ethan joined us two years later, and then Joseph, and then Johnny was born. So, we had four boys in seven and a half years. Um, they have been homeschooled pretty much all the way through. But at the time that Isaac was born, we were living in Georgia, and I was the assistant to a pastor of a small church, and it was so small that they encouraged me to get a job. So I started working at the local public high school. I was a math teacher. 
And then eventually I was ordained full-time pastor. So I was a pastor and I was a school teacher. And our life was uh, turned upside down, you might say, when Johnny was born because he had multiple surgeries, uh, open heart surgery, intestinal surgery, he almost died of a virus. Uh, there was something else in there too. He, anyway, and he gained a pound the first year. So my wife and I wow. both ran out of gas and we had to move to a different state just to kind of regroup as a family. And in the process, I had to make a living. So I started tutoring children in math. And I ended up writing my own materials for the kids I was tutoring, which then grew into Matthew C. So that's the yeah. overview. But um, we have, as a family, been very intentional about building family. And when I say the word intentional, I think that's what God calls us to do. And probably the main verse for me was Deuteronomy chapter 6 that says, you shall teach your children diligently. Yeah when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you rise up and when you lie down, in other words, 24 seven. And I, I looked at that and I thought there's two things there. I need to teach my kids the word of God, which leads into our podcast today. And the second mm -hmm. thing I need to do is I need to be with them because even though we can talk, they are also observing our walk. And yeah. both of those are captured in that verse right there. And then uh, Matthew C. began to grow. My kids ended up um, joining the company. And in 2012, we said, wow, let's have a family-owned company instead of just Steve's company. And when we did, um, my sons ended up taking over the leadership of the company, which freed me up to do what I've always been doing and wanted to do was just throw myself into this whole idea of building families, especially encouraging dads. Because I, I think moms... Yvette, I, I think you guys already have bonds with your kids. I think it's in the process of birthing and carrying that child, but moms are just bonded. But dads, according to Malachi, we have to have our hearts turned towards home. Yeah. Because we can get so taken up with our career and making a difference and being significant and all that. And we identify ourselves by those things. Have you ever noticed when you meet a guy, first thing they say is, hey, where are you from? What do you do? Right which I avoid that question now. I want to get to know people for who they are, not for what yeah. they do. So anyway, there's the overview. And uh, how's that for a start? I love it. I love it. It's so interesting okay. that you talk about Malachi. We recently had Davis Carmen on the podcast and he was talking about um, dads. He was talking specifically to dads. And he talked about, he kind of took us through some parts of Malachi as well. And so um, such a powerful book when it does come to dads and their role and responsibility as the leaders of their home. Um, I want to talk this week specifically about the importance of family worship. And there are so many components that go with that in family discipleship. We talk about family discipleship all the time through homeschooling, but I want to focus really on having a real family worship time and what that means, what that looks like for our families. But first, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Steve. Um, all right, we're talking about family worship time and how that relates to family discipleship. And like I said, you know, as homeschool families, we have such an opportunity, but not just an opportunity, a responsibility to lead our kids in God's word and to lead them in family worship. And we're going to talk about what that means. But it is a great responsibility that we have. So first I want to talk about what God's design is for, for family worship and, and what, his, what his design is in the area of spiritual development for our kids. Because of course, you know, you're a math guy. So many people, you know, we've used Matthew C. So many people use Matthew C. And, you know, various other things, you know, whether it's not grass history or apology of science or whatever it is. And so we tend to focus on the academic part of our day and we get all nervous about the academics and feel like, ah, we're doing it all wrong. But how many of us really focus on 
scripture and teaching that to our kids and teaching our kids how to worship worship. And so Steve, I would love for you to just kind of jump into what does that mean for us? How do we as as moms and dads train up our kids in the area of spiritual development? Okay. So as I said, for 30 years when I spoke on this topic, I started with Deuteronomy 6 7. Yeah. And I did not grow up in a Christian home. My mom and dad came to Christ later in life. It's a wonderful story, but I was the first person to hear the gospel and respond. But I knew that I needed to be teaching my children God's word. So we set out to just read the Bible to our children. So when they were younger, they would sit on our laps as they came along, you know, through the through the process, but they would sit on our laps and when they were real young, we would read Bible storybooks that were illustrated and we would read through them. We would talk to them. We'd pray together. When they got a little older, this was what I call the golden years. When they were old enough to read, that we got the same translation, large print, and we would read around the room three verses at a time. Now, I'm consolidating a lot here, but it took sure. us a while to kind of find the sweet spot. If you read one verse, everybody was, it was just moving too quickly. You didn't have a chance. But if you read four or five verses, people were falling asleep when it was their turn, <laughs> et cetera. So we found that three verses. So here's what a typical day would look like. I'm not going to do this for those of you that are listening, but I would whistle. It's my job, I felt, to gather the troops. Now, this is after I've talked to my wife. We've worked together. We've developed a plan. When's the best time? Where's the best place? Yeah. You know, and we don't, I don't want to interrupt the teaching schedule, but it has to be something where the kids are fresh because this was our number one priority. Yeah. That, that's the first thing that a mom and dad have to do is you have to identify what your big rocks are. What are your responsibilities? And we felt like we wanted to teach our children the word of God so that they can be saved. Ultimately, mm -hmm. we want our children to know Jesus. Right. We can't choose Jesus for our children, but we can influence them by reading the word of God, by living out our faith, by praying for them, faithfully attending services, etc. So we started off and when they would had their Bibles open on their lap, the first thing I would do is I would whistle. I have a very loud piercing whistle <laughs> and I would gather all the troops. I know Maria on the Sound of Music doesn't appreciate whistles, but it worked in our home. <laughs> So I would whistle, everybody would gather, we'd get our Bibles, we'd sit down in a circle around our living room, and I would pray. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first started, I was kind of afraid this is going to be like another sermon prep, and I'm going to have to consult commentaries, I'm going to have to, you know, all this. Didn't do it at all. I simply gathered the troops, turned the meeting over to Jesus, invited him to be with us, and then we would choose a scripture. Now, we've read through the entire Bible, except for a few minor prophets, one chapter at a time. Yeah. It takes about eight minutes. I've, I've clocked this. I've done my own research. 8.3 minutes. And so we would read around the room. If we had time, then we'd go back around and say, what did you learn today? Fascinating to see yeah. children's insights. If we had time, we sang a hymn. Then we would close in prayer. Wrap it up. So an ideal day might take 20 minutes when we did all three of those components. But if it was a, one of those harried days, we would just read a chapter, pray, go about our business. And that was our model. Yeah. But it was wonderful because as I look back, that was one of my sweetest experiences as a dad was sitting there reading the word of God, yeah. which God wrote to be read yeah. by each of his children. And we, we just did. And it was wonderful. And hymns were a big part of it. Um, praying. Sometimes we would pray for each other. Sometimes we would pray for specific needs. So this, this whole idea of getting together as a family and reading the Word of God together and praying together and singing a hymn together, we even uh, we tweaked it over the years. We went through a phase where we memorized hymns, one verse per day. And since I had boys, um, they're more visual learners. I would pass out the paper and the colored markers or the pencils, whatever. And we would draw pictures of each of the verses to help with our memory 
one day we came to a hymn that I could not draw. And it was Dare to be a Daniel. And it starts off standing by a purpose firm. How do you illustrate a purpose firm? And I pretty much prayed to my, you know, I said, what's this? And I got an idea. I drew a dead porpoise, a (laughs) porpoise firm, which I'm, what I'm trying to say is we tried to have fun doing this. Now my wife would roll her eyes, which made it even better. And the kids were all laughing and drawing (laughs) dead fish. But to this day, I can sing all four verses of that hymn because we learned it together as a family. So this family worship was really number one on my wife and I's priority. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. Um, Let's talk a little bit about kind of like what the difference is between corporate worship, because, you know, we say we're going to go to church on Sunday morning or maybe on Wednesday night or whatever, and we're going to worship corporately with our church body. What is the difference between corporate worship and family worship? Kind of differentiate those two for me. Well, I would say that our children, because we covered almost the entire Bible, we've read it out loud as a family, except for a few minor prophets. Our children were able to enter into corporate worship much differently because, number one, they had sung a whole bunch of those hymns at home. Yeah. Number two, they knew the scriptures. Yeah. And our children always sat with us in the worship service. Yep. So so we didn't make a distinction. We didn't put them to children's church or whatever. In fact, one church that I was pastoring, it was small enough that we could make decisions. And we stopped having Sunday school because the purpose of Sunday school was to teach your children the word of God. Well, our kids already knew it. And the Sunday school teachers were complaining. And they said, there was a couple of families that were homeschooling in our church. And they said, your kids know more than we do. <laughs> Why are we having these uh, little cute lessons and coloring pages? And the right. kids wanted to be in the prayer meetings because yeah. the prayer meetings were really prayer meetings. I mean, we really prayed instead of just talking about prayer. And they thought that that sounded more fun than coloring pictures. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Flannel graphs, not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they still use those in Sunday school? I have no idea if they do or not. I have no idea either. I'm not a fan of Sunday school, I hate to say. Yeah, no, actually, I'm not either. And our girls sit with us at church. They have um, for most of their childhood, um, and they're able to learn so much. As a matter of fact, I've I've not done this with my girls, but I have had friends who have done this and seen other people do this at church with their kids who sit in the service with them, is you can go on, I think, Pinterest or any you know anywhere on, on the internet and download like kids' sermon notes sheets. And there are these cute little things that, you know, some moms have made up where it will have the kids take notes during the sermon. You could just print them off on your printer. And I've thought, you know, that's a fantastic way for kids to be able to pay attention and try to grasp what the pastor is saying. Um, But, you know, one of my favorite things about them being with us is that they also get the opportunity to worship with us. And when I say worship, I mean singing as well. Um, And like you said, you know, recognizing those old hymns. Um, recognizing any worship song, and they know now, like, okay, this is a really terrible worship song that we're singing. It's all about me, me, me. Or, wow, this worship song is really worshipful. And I'm so grateful for the discernment that they have because they have sat in church with us as well. One of the things that you wrote in your book that I thought was, it's so simple, but it's so powerful, is you said this. You said, no special training is needed to read the Bible. God wrote the Bible to be read by all of his people. And I love that so much because I think oftentimes as parents, we, if especially if we've not been raised up in the church, and we're going to talk about that um, on Wednesday, but if we've not been raised up in the church, it's, it seems really intimidating to open up the Word of God and read the Bible because we think, well, I don't know enough about it. How can I possibly teach it to my kids? And so I love this statement by you. God made it to be understood by all of his creation, by everybody. And so, you know, God's word does not return void. And even if we don't understand exactly what we're reading, it is still the powerful word of God. Um, So we're going to park there for today. We're out of time, but we're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to talk more about family worship, what that looks like, why we do it, who's supposed to lead, what the kids' role is in family worship, and and all sorts of other fun things. Um, So Steve, I I did mention, of course, that you have this book. It's the family worship book. You also have it. I don't have my copy. I have it, but for some reason, I bring it with me um, to my studio. Um, You have your hymn book. There it is, hymns. I love that book. And and what Steve does in this book is he goes through how many, I want to say 80 something hymns that you have in there. How many? 100. And I'm just adding 25 for next year right now. 
Okay, so 125. So it'll be 125. But the history wow. is on one side and the hymn is on yes. the other side. I love it so much. So yeah, he talks about the history of each hymn and the author and you know, just the story behind it. And they're fascinating to read. And I have come to love hymns more in the last probably three or four years than I ever have in my whole life. And part of that is because of your hymn book. And we've used that in our morning basket time. And um, it has been such a blessing to our family. So thank you so much for just your labor of love in, in these resources that you've pulled together. So we'll put links to those in the show notes, um, but we'll be back on Wednesday. And, um, you know, it is almost the end of the year. It's December. I know there's so much going on with Christmas and the new year coming and lots of things happening around us. And so I'm so grateful that you are taking the time to listen to this podcast because there are so many other things you could be doing right now. Um, if you would consider as you're, as we're nearing the end of the year, if you are um, just, you feel like the Lord is leading you to help contribute to the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked, um, please do so. You can go to schoolhouserocked.com, click on the donate button and um, just donate to the ministry. We would love that. Thank you, Steve, for being with us. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Have a great day. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. 